Generic greetings and welcome to Beverage Plus Pulsar Lost Colony. Once again, today's beverage is... Ah, Bovril, a nice, tasty, juicy meat drink. It's lovely. It's nice when it's cold outside and miserable and damp like it is today. It's typical British weather. One day it's red hot and boiling and your skin is melting off. And today, like today, it's uh, gone the other way and it's just cold and miserable and damp. Where I live as well, in the north of England, it's um, it, well, daylight's quite rashing, to be honest with you. So, you know, we, we, we take what we can get. Anyway, this is Pulsar Lost Colony, a cooperative spaceship simulation game that I featured on the channel a couple of times. But I recently jumped back in because I saw some updates and I thought I'd give it a go and I jumped into a random multiplayer match and thought wow there's been lots of changes so I thought I would feature it again show you a bit of it and maybe introduce it to you know new people maybe you haven't seen this game before in which case then uh, you know it might be interesting also I got a couple of friends in with Hi John, they're all called John, all my friends, so you know, it works out for that one if they're watching. And uh, yeah, we've been playing together and uh, enjoying it and, and messing stuff up as always happens. Anyway, I'm going to jump in and show you a bit of the game. So we're going to go to play and then to actually start crew, and we'll start in new crew. I've got the generic explorer ship and there's the password there just to make it private. And there's three ships you can choose from. You've got the Intrepid, which is basically the first one they introduced. It's the most balanced of all the ships. Then you've got the WD Cruiser, which is a bit of a brick and it's, you know, it's okay and then we've got the Stargazer which is sort of a stealthy type weird thing. I think we're going to go for the Intrepid because that's the one most people if they've uh, played the game are familiar with. Like I say, if you haven't played the game then I'll be explaining how it goes. So, as I said, it is a cooperative game and the idea is that you are crewing a spaceship and we need to select a role and the roles do make a difference. I'm just going to go for captain because, well, why not? I'm technically they're going to be the captain here. And as I said, it is co-op. You have to, you know, have people on your ship and, um, you know, Pilot these things and operate all of the all of the things on it So this is like the science terminal and you can modulate the shield frequencies and things like that and that changes detecting range You can also search for like different planets and sectors You've also got programs which can do things like you know uh, the sitting duck virus you broadcast that and it will uh, You know break the opponent's ship You've also got like you know things that signatures in our our sort of scan range in which case you got our generic explorer ship repair depot and the automated trading station over here is where we've got like the um the reactor controls, and we can say, oh, max power to shields and things like that. We can also initiate jump prep, which makes a horrible clunk. Whoa, that sounds really meaty. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. It sounds like someone's swinging a bag of spanners inside a kettle drum. And that's what happens when you uh, actually try to make this thing jump. But yeah, we're, we're spooling up the drive, and as you can see, the car temperature is uh, going up a little bit, but not uh, not too much. You've also got auxiliary reactor configuration, which you can think turn things like the interior lights off, and it does just go pitch black. Look at that. You can hardly see anything. There's just a couple of lights on the consoles and around the top there, but pretty much it is dark. You can turn on your flashlight and go around and you will be doing this if um, you know if you really need to save energy but it is pretty much pitch black there you go it sounds like it is actually uh, it is actually spooled up there but we're, we're not really we don't really want to jump at the moment because we go through that station which will actually be boarding in a moment a lot of the things have introduced uh, recently these extra screens here it shows you like the status of your ship it's, it shows you the things like the um, the overall health of your system so that's like engineering that's weapons that's life spot and that's science it shows you our shields and stuff we also got coolant reserves and we can go for distress signals and stuff let's go around here and we can see the wep like weapon station now this is also the teleport pad as well which um, currently doesn't have any effects but you know you can use it. We can also say, oh look, oh this is the nuke controls, but we don't have a nuke. You need to buy a nuke, which is a shame. You can get on our weapons as well. Get on the weapons and start, yeah, firing the railgun or get onto the laser. Yeah, that works as well. There's also a big meaty space cannon, but we can't really use that because we don't have the ability. To get the ability, we can check our overview because I'm the captain. I get these orders here. I can say red alert, and it puts the generic explorer on red alert, and then you can say orders, explore. You know, that's basically a way of communicating with your crew and such. Well, if we got a talents, you can see that uh, we've got short talents for the captain, which is me, and I can say crew uh, marathon training increases crew run speed by eight percent per rank. So when you level up, and you will be leveling up, you can actually, uh, you know, get the increase the crew. Or if, for example, if you've got a, oh, we don't actually have another person, but we can now add bots. We go there's a weapons guy, there's a scientist, there's an engineer, and there you go. I'm not going to add a pilot because they'll start moving the ship and it's a big pain. So if I just go to re ex uh, relax, basically the crew, there's, there's a crew, there's weapon bot. Hello weapon bot, how are you? You are a bit, um, wooden. It's like half the Star Trek actors. Uh, <laughs> right, let's go into here. We've got ah, a science bot. He's crewing the science station. Now then, how's it going? Yep, again, yep, expressionless. Mannequin Skywalker here. 
Yep, they're all just standing away. They will operate these things when they need to. But yes, we can actually now uh, see that they've got, you know, Weapon Specialist has, you know, ooh, the ability to uh, reduce the charge booster. Increase the charge speed of your turret, uh, the turret that they're operating. Quite good. They're also the only one that can operate this big honking space cannon. But I think if you, yeah, if you've got a talent there, advanced operator, you can operate the space cannon. Missions are also in now as well. There's a couple of missions, and I think we might as well get one. So what I'm going to do is teleport to the station. And we're now at the other station. Wow, look at this. It's fairly big. This is the one that you saw wrecked. Uh, there is a story that goes with it, but I'm not going to explain it. Also, which is quite surprised, you've got a rocket pack, which is... um. Quite powerful, and you can really, really boost. There you go. Uh, there's a mission over here. You can see the fuel tank uh, going up on the left there. We can have a little chat with her. Hello. My desk is uh, for Colonial Union Officer Assignments. Due to a recent crisis, we've opened jobs for any officers. Yes, I'm experienced, and I will accept your mission. And we get another mission, which the mission is to go and do things. Now, as I said, it is still in alpha and, you know, it's heavily in development, so it is quite bugged and there's problems, and I've had decent issues and things like that, but it is just fun, right? I like the way that they're doing stuff, as in, they're basically saying, we are putting as much stuff in the game as possible, we're not going to polish the chrome, there's no point, we will poli we'll make sure it works, and then move on and continue putting game, you know, they're making game. They're not just going, we're going to spend three weeks on polishing this little bit of the console because then it's finalised because that's just a silly way of doing it. Other things we can go to, we go back here, we've got engineering and we've got the lounge. Engineering, there's a couple of things since I last played. This is an emergency car eject, which you can do when the core, this thing here, gets uh, over, like, gets basically overheating levels, but also that's the core safety toggle. The ship will automatically do it, but if you turn that off, then, uh, yeah, it, it will, um, it will happily just sort of <laughs> eject. If you turn it off, it will happily make the core sit there until it blows up. You can also turn things off, like, there you go, there's our shields off, there you go, and we can turn that back on. We can also just completely shut the ship down. Which will break it. Now watch all the crew come running. Ah, oh, look, all the crew comes in. They just start to turn everything on. Look, all the crew are randomly pulling all the levers trying to fix the thing. Sorry. And now, actually, there's no signal to all these consoles because um, you need to manually override. Let's go over here and we'll say manual override. There we go. And we turn all the screens on because you can actually take over other people's ships. So let's have a quick look at our star map here. And we can see if we turn this off to missions only. Our mission is actually up here. There we go, that's our mission there, uh, Merva 7. If we right click, we actually see our jump route, which is quite far away. Now, if I put my warp network on, I can see that there is a warp network next to me there. Now, is there a warp network up here? Uh, there is ish. So we can go to the warp network and then come down. That's probably a more efficient way. So let's clear our uh, jump. I'm going to go to zero or 804. So that's where we're going to be headed because that's going to be a more efficient way of doing things. So if we just go to our scanner... Go to search, and now we go to 804, and we search for that. We should be able to find that it is a Colonial Union operation. Uh, it is discovered, and uh, it doesn't have a planet distance for, so it's quite close. So if I just get on the uh, the helm here, and we can then see, uh, we can actually fly around and stuff. That's pretty cool. Where do we need to go? Ah, down there. So we'll just tilt the ship down. I've got all my flying mode on. There's a couple of different modes of flying things. You can go for manual mode, which basically it's more of a vectored thrust than anything else and it's uh, it does work so i'm going to point this towards there and honestly i'm just going to pull the trigger on this one jump to sector 804 and that will start as warping there you go we are now in warp now originally when i last played this it was a case of you just jumped immediately like bing and you jumped immediately and it was a loading screen i'm glad they got rid of that i'm glad they went for this sort of system uh look at that i like the lighting very very bright I'm going to turn off a couple of things. I'm going to turn off our spotlights, which is on the outside. Uh, turn off the missile lock, because I don't think that does anything. Neither does climate control and the atrium healing. We actually save a little bit of uh, power, which basically means it flows into the other reactor, which is quite good as well. You can actually buy different things for your uh, ship. If I go to uh, ship components, we can see there's loads of different components, and you actually buy different ones. And as you progress on, you will find different items and things like that, and you'll be able to buy, uh, buy different items, equipment to your ship, and get better and better and better. It looks like we've jumped into the system. There we go, and it's ooh, randomly generated and all very, very purple. What I need to do then, is actually got the comms. I need to go to the. I need to comm the warp station, but I need to know where we're going to jump to. We're going to jump to the other. Our mission is there, so we need to jump to the closest network, which is this one here, which is one six six one. So if we have a little chat with this thing, warp station, we need to align it to one six six one. There we go. And now what's going to happen? 
as you can see, it is actually, that's not my ship, well, that is my ship turning, but also that is spinning round and turning that, the Stargate, because it's now pointed over there, the jump network, it's very EVE Online-ish, we need to go forward and basically go inside it and jump to the next sector, and way there we go, and we're in the jump network, and we can then go to tab and see the star map, and we can see where we're going to. Do you see what I mean? It works, the game works, right? I mean, it's not fully finished, and there's bugs all over the place, but it does work, and it's fun. Mm. As I said, I've uh, I played with a couple of random people online, but the, the best experience is when you're with a couple of friends, or even just strangers on Skype. As long as you've got comms, and you've got a good crew, then it's really good. Now, I, I, I don't really know much about the end game because honestly, we just haven't got there. But um, as far as I'm aware, and I've been told that you know that you can get these big ships and you can uh, you have to take them over and things like that. But eventually, uh, this chaos level will rise, and also the uh, infected level will rise to 100%, and basically you get destroyed. So the end game is um, yeah, it's sort of it's it's more of a case of you play until you can't. But you know, it's alpha game is alpha. But the actual dest the j that that's the destination. The destination is garbage, as in you will die. The journey, however, is really fun because you go to different systems and you can board different ships and things like that. So that's all good. Anyway, I'm going to skip this because you can skip it up top there. And yeah, we go into there. Oh, and crew levels increase, which means we can go to talents and we can level things up. So I can say scavenger. Let's add some more points into that so we can increase our... We basically get more money per rank, which is quite good. We can go to weapon specialist and we can add rank to them as well. So I think we'll say... Uh, we'll go for a turret charge booster. Scientist, we will say... Bridge medic heals everybody. Scanner alignment. Uh, boost ship detection by 15% level. Reduces ship signature. And increases positive effects for shield frequency setting. Let's do that because shields are very, very good. Engineer will go for... Slow spread of uh, spread and growth of fires because fires are not good. Right, so let's just go to our star map and we need to check on. We need to go for shops now. Actually, we just need to check everything and we need to see. We need to head over to. Where's our mission? There. Right click there. Why can't we do that? Ah, is our jump. Will we be able to get there? We should be able to get there. I think I know what's happened. What it's doing is it's resetting my... Because I haven't reset my my planet, it's still planning me down the other side. So there... No, it's just broke. Can I get there? I can't get there. I actually can't get there. I can only go to there, and there, and there, but that will not allow me to connect over there. So that's just screwed it right up for me. My jump drive range, which is this, is not high enough. So what I'm going to do instead is... Go there and then head to that bit there, which is like a place where you can buy things. And hopefully, hopefully, we'll be able to buy a better jump drive. So we're going to go to 479. So let's just align it to 479. And oh, what's up there? Oh, look at that. That's very nice, isn't it? Very, very... Ah, it's all bloom. It actually runs Unity, this. I believe Unity 5 they upgraded to because there was a, you know, it, well, it's a new Unity version, wasn't it? Right, let's spool the driver, which I love the sound of. Here we go. <laughs> Just the effect when you turn it on and you can hear and there's a big clunk in the back and it's all and all these start all the dials start lighting up, the engineering starts going up. I really, really do like that. Let's just say maximum. Yeah, everybody can use as much power as they want because to be honest with you, we have the capability. There we are. Total usage, you can just max it out. And we'll jump. And we're then in what? <laughs> right. Now the problem we might experience is if we come across someone who is a little bit um Nasty. Let's just skip this. Yes. Okay. This is not good. There's two ships here. Oh no, there's one ship. There's the way they're shooting us. There's the USS Peacekeeping over there, and we are shooting them. Whoa! The reason my ship rock like that is because you can see the big, big thing on the top. That big sort of long gun. Yeah, that is a really big honking space cannon, and that was. Um, it gives. It's got a bit of recoil on it. The big problem as well is that thing there. That is actually a space mine. And if you hit that, yep, you will pretty much die, which is not a good thing, obviously. Shields are gone on our ship, as you can see on the top right, but we have almost destroyed them. If I wanted to, I could board their ship. I could just board their ship, go here and say, yeah, I'm board I've now boarded their ship, and I'll draw my gun, and I'm going to get shot. Oh, God, oh, God, and I'm dead. Um... <laughs> 
<laughs> that did not go as planned, did it? That really didn't go as planned. Hmm, yes, uh, you can board other people's ships and take them, but generally you really want a crew to do that. Now, I have a problem here. My ship is more damaged than theirs. I've just respawned, and what I'm going to do is go to the bridge, and I really need to go to programs, and, oh, it looks like our, sh our, our computer is managing to, uh, you know, do things properly. It is actually it is actually using some of these things here, which are all of the programs. Uh, what can we do? Shields have been used. Shields have been used. Basically, we've done our best. But I'm going to have to turn the coolant on. The coolant's on. Wow. They, they com they actually, the computer is um, surprisingly competent, apart from the fact that I haven't got a pilot, which means that all of our weapons have not been shooting here. So let's just go down and... We should be able to get our guns in here. There we go. So their shields are apparently gone. Okay, they exploded. <laughs> you don't really get the full effect of this. When you play in this corp with obviously like with other people and you're actually shouting orders and receiving orders and you know saying it's all broke, you've broke the bloody ship. It's really, really, really good. Let's just collect this loot here and I've managed to get some loot. Let's see what we've got. Let's just exit this thing and I'll put my weapon away. And we'll go in here, and oh, we've got a workhorse, whatever that is, we've got some scrap, we've got some scrap, we've got a laser turret, and that's pretty good, so you can see we're actually collecting loot now, let's just have a quick look, for some reason, this is where you can do most of your stuff, but you still have to press escape to go to ship components and see what's in your cargo, there's a laser turret, there's a workhorse, a really, ah, provides reasonable jump capability and above average computational power, charge rate is 6, range is 7, our current range is... Four. Fantastic. So we actually wanted a jump drive and we got a jump drive. Okay, good. So what I can do now then, I'll actually quickly show you, by the way, the, uh, the customized appearance. You can actually change your appearance. So you can say male, female, and you can just randomize it if you want. There you go. It works. It's very basic, but it works. Cool. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm going to keep mashing it until I get something that looks like Jane where I don't think we're going to get that. <laughs> uh... No, if Jim may look like that, then um, you know, there maybe wouldn't be so much coffee in that nebula. Right, references, let's go in here. We need to go to that place there, which is actually the home world, or starting location, should I say, of uh, one of the other factions. There's several factions in the game. I think there's six overall planned. There's the, um, I always got to say League of Gentlemen, but it's not. It's like the uh, the Union of Gentlemen or something like that. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh... WD Corp, yeah, Colonial Union, and then there's Neutral, but there's also the Fluffy Biscuit Company. Uh, yes, that is actually the, the main company of the of the game. <laughs> and you do get Fluffy Biscuits, which you can eat. In fact, I might have one on me. It's got inventory. Ah, the classic biscuit. Yeah, They're replicated from Fluffy Biscuit Company's signature formula. Fills you with a fluffy feeling when eaten. There you go. Mental. Yes, you can actually rep uh, equip pistols and different fire extinguishers and things like that. What I need to do is immediately get to our location, because if you look on the top right there, uh, Generic Explorer, uh, we've got full shields, but our hull is a lot to, leaves a lot to be desired. In fact, we've got 238 hull of 600, which is not good. Let's jump to the next sector, and hopefully we can buy different things. Um, the, the actual map itself, the star map, is randomly generated, which is awesome. And also, what's that there? That is infected. Oh, all of them are infected by the look of it. 3%. Not good. Let's not go there. Apparently, there's some really, really horrible tyranny-type bug-like creatures that kick your ass. So I'm not going to go there. Um, this here, that is a starting location for one of the other uh, factions and stuff. And like I said, it's randomly generated and you start in different areas. Let's just skip over to there. It's quite good. Uh, you know, I mean, sometimes you don't want to skip the things. But sometimes, you know, like if, for example, if you're trying to repair the ship and stuff, then it's a good idea not to, um, it's a good idea not to skip. But, uh, you know, if you're trying to go from one place to the other and you're trying to put out fires then you don't want to skip it do you what i'm going to do i'm going to put this thing in a dry dock because um well we are pretty much broken aren't we so let's just go in here and oh the, the skill of the piloting as i probably ram into something and about we'll stop out there and there we go so we can see that we're getting hit with all of these late weed lasers but the shields are still up so we need to turn the shields off There we go. So shields are now offline. So I should be able to have a quick com to our repair depot. Welcome to... Ah, yes. And now what's happening is all the AI is going to come in and try to turn this thing on. You 
bunch of fat heads, so I can read I can sack them all if I want to remove them all, but what I'm gonna do is go to green alert, not that that does anything you understand. Uh, I'm actually going to have to quickly turn it off and then quickly go to comms and repair hole. There we go. It's now fully repaired. Off. Off. Oh, for feck's sake. It's repaired anyway. It's fully repaired. We don't need to worry too much about it. So, we've got 3,967 credits on the bottom right. Let's go to our comms and we've got a gruff stuff. We'll browse his exotic goods. And he's got a burst turret. Ooh, that sounds pretty cool. A l ludicrous jump range module. Is that like ludicrous jump range module from Spaceballs? <laughs> ludicrous speeds! That's... <laughs> we've gone to plaid. <laughs> oh, good grief. Ooh, they've also got a nuke. Mm, WD small nuke. We can't afford it, though. I really like nukes. It's too much watching B5. Right, we'll sell the scrap. Because, obviously, it's just scrap. It's basically just something you, you can really not sell quite uh, readily. And we've got a workhorse jump drive. And we've got a laser turret. Let's just close that. What I want to do is I want to uh, install ship components. And this is, obviously, I've shown you the screen before, but you can't install it from there. You have to actually move to France. So I'm going to install our new jump drive. Our laser turret is quite good. We've got a laser turret there and a railgun turret there. One of them is automated, though. Um... So our laser turret, that, that laser turret's 19 uh, damage with 3.3 each air charge time. That's 16, so we've actually got, that's a better laser turret. So we're going to swap that laser turret out. In fact, what I might do, mm, so the railgun is really, really high high damage, but it's obviously, it does take a while for it, this, the thing to get there. So it looks like we are set to go. So I should be able to now if I just, I'll, I'll pull us out of dock because obviously other people might be coming to... Uh, want to come in here. That's not true. That doesn't happen. Uh, we've got a star map and we will uh, reset our uh, location. There we are. Go to missions. Yes, we can actually jump there. It's going to be a couple of jumps. 1810 is our next location, which is over there. Fantastic. I should have bought some more fuel, but uh, I didn't bother. But basically, this is the game. Jumping from sector to sector, exploring what you find. You will find different planets and things like that. Um, obviously, trying to fend off, fend things off and not die. Boarding enemy ships and taking it over. There's a lot more planned. Like, you know, there's a, there is a lot more planned, but, you know, it is still in development and all that. I think there's only a couple of people doing it as well. It's not like a massive studio or anything. <sighs> nice. I think a, a nice um, jump computer warp charging beverage is in order here. Mm. <sighs> it's the warp engine Bovril. Right, so let's jump the ship and here we go. I don't know if we're actually going to get where we're going uh, going to go because uh, we're getting one now and the beverage is almost empty. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's turn off the interior lights here because this looks amazing. Look at that. That's just the light from the jump point, and that, oh, look at that, it does illuminate the entire thing. That's really pretty. Very pretty indeed. Let's put them back on, and we'll skip. How are we going to find anything? Small security drone. Ah! Now this is interesting, it hasn't detected us. See, on the right, it hasn't detected us yet. What we can do, we can make sure our shields... Shields are modulate, which is 32 energy defense minus 30% detection. If I change it to static, that in, that basically we, we take uh, we don't take as much damage from physical weapons, but we do we might get detected. Now let's see what happens if I get on this and just point us towards that. There we go. We have pointed there. Now what will happen? I reckon as soon as I try and charge the drive up, our EM spy, our EM signature. That one, EM 0 0.5, that'll go through the roof and it'll detect us. Yeah, immediately detects us straight away, because look, our EM signature's gone to 10.8. So, yeah, that's not good. So, and also the cannon is putting us out of jump, uh, basically putting it out of um, alignment. So let's pull back to about there, and hopefully it'll spool up in time. Before that guy, before the, uh, the the weapons engineer fires the gun again. Uh, shields are holding quite well. Uh, we'll put our shields up to max. There we go. And engineering, we'll say, we'll max that out as well because we really want to charge this drive up quicker. Are we still in alignment? I think we are. It's still charging. 
jump calculating, warp drive charge is full, finalizing jump data when we, because we're still lying to the planet, we've destroyed the opponent anyway, so we'll, oh, line ship to target, but yeah, it looks like we have moved, please hope we haven't half moved, uh, there's some wreckage over there, I could go and pick it up, but I don't really want to, ooh, it's a big asteroid with a crystal back there, <laughs> as I said, it's all randomly generated what you're going to find, so that's pretty cool, let's jump to this next sector, I want to find a planet, I want to jump onto a planet, the planets that you go to, you find a couple of different things, um, the first planet that, uh, I ever experienced was um, jump in progress. We'll skip that. Uh, the first planet I ever went to it looks like there's a small security drone as well and a bit of wreckage. I don't think we can jump to it, can we? Don't think we'll be able to. No, we can't. Uh, we can't teleport to it. Um, yeah, the, the the first planet I actually I ever uh, I ever I ever went to. Yeah, as soon as we activate the engines as well. Look at that. We start getting shot at. What I'm going to do is turn the ship so the bottom's there, so our weapons can't fire, and just charge the jump drive up. I think that's going to be the best way of doing it. There we are. How is our... Mm, there's a small security drone there. You can see it's got no atmosphere because you can't board the thing. No, you can't board the thing. <laughs> Which would be silly anyway. It's like FTL boarding something without atmosphere. Let's max out the engineering uh, power because then we should be able... Let's also max out the shield power as well. Uh, we should be able to uh, jump pretty much immediately. Yeah, our shields are taking damage, but we should be fine. We should be fine, I say. Yeah, and then we'll jump to the next sector. Whew. Anyway, yeah, the first planet I went onto, it was one of these crashed ships, which was pretty interesting. We were exploring it at the time. Me and friend, oh, yeah, this looks, this looks pretty cool. And then um, he ended up uh, getting it by a worm. Uh, which is like tremors, basically, which is not good. Uh, let's just... Uh, see, this is a problem here. This is what I mentioned earlier about skipping ahead. I've skipped ahead, which means that we didn't have time to really repair the shields. I've maxed out, uh, maxed out the shield energy, you see. I'm going to take our weapons power to nothing because we don't need it. Core temperature is flying up, which is not good. We've got the coolant reserve. We've got the coolant pump off, which obviously cools the reactor. I think it is time to turn that to low. And that should... That's not cooling the reactor whatsoever. Let's put it to high. Yeah, now it's cooling the reactor, but obviously it's using coolant. If I... They've turned that off. The temperature can get quite high. If we go back, we should be able to see it. It will actually be quite warm, this thing now. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's definitely warm. Um, <laughs> we could eject the car, but I don't really want to do that. It's also making some horrible noises. Let's just quickly leg it, leg it, leg it, leg it, leg it, leg it, leg it. Pull the trigger. There we go. Poof. So, we're managing to jump to actually the mission I'm trying to go to, which is... Uh, what is the mission? The missions are not randomly generated. Find uh, Merva 7 and retrieve medical supplies and investigate outlaw operation. Okay, so that should be quite easy. Let's just go here. And we should have a planet somewhere. Wow, there it is. Very simple, but very pretty. The lighting makes it pretty. Right, what I'm going to do is tell all my crew. Uh, got a crew. And... Uh, Stand down to green alert, but I do want to say that chaos level is flashing. When that goes up, then it basically things get harder and harder and harder. We need to go to... Why does that say average FPS 39? I've got a solid 60, but I'm recording at 30, but yeah, maybe that's got some problems there. Right, I want to go and say orders to the crew. Mm, stay close to the captain, so all of the crew should follow me now. That's good, and we can beam down to the planet. There we go, so we'll beam down to the planet. There we go. Come on, crew, let's go. And sadly, uh, they're glitched out and they won't move any further. So I have to investigate this big tower thing. Uh, go inside. Oh, no, they are following me. It's only weapons bot that's a bit dim, maybe. I don't know. Let's have a look around. Should we have a look around? I think the crew are following me. We'll go inside. What are we going to find? Well, it's an elevator. The crew ain't following me. Uh, I think there's some enemies about the place. But we can investigate, investigate this thing and find loads of different stuff. But you know what? I'm out of beverage. <sighs> I think I'm all done. Wow. The amount of stuff that's been added to this game is unbelievable. And it plays well. It's buggy, but I don't particularly care because I know it's in development. This is the... This is the type of thing I want from, like, early access and, you know, in-development games. As in, they're giving you content. And they flatly say, you know what? Not everything is working. But we'd rather make a game that you can play and enjoy than make stuff that's going to take forever that you can't play. And, you know, oh, we're going to introduce a new feature now and again. You know, 
I think there's a fine balance, you know, like Prison Architect and this, they've got the balance right, they're introducing new content, but also squashing bugs, you know, but there's no point in squashing loads of bugs when you haven't got a game to play, there's no real point in that, I'm looking around, I'm not finding anything apart from, ooh, there's some medical supplies over here, there we go, there's some medical supplies that I actually need to find, and there's another place to go up as well. No enemies, though, which I'm very surprised about. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Link's in the description so you can check it out yourself. I honestly cannot recommend this highly enough. Ow. Okay, that's activate my jump pack at the uh, at the last moment. Yeah, I can't. I honestly can't recommend recommend this enough. If you've got a couple of friends that really want the sort of co-op FTL experience, as in piloting a ship cooperatively and flying around, it is still in development. What you've seen is pretty much what you're going to get, but... It is fun, at least in my opinion and all that. Links in the description so you can check it out. Comments in the comments, thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic space exploration partings.